Hey, good morning, everybody. I am going to do a quick video. Well, it's not quick from my end, but it's quick from your end because I've cut out all the waiting bits of our apple, cinnamon, and honey hala Rosh Hashanah. It's from our most recent book, Now for Something Sweet. So let's talk hala. This is a our very first and best hala recipe that it was in our very first book from Sydney's Rebbits and Honey Wolf. And it has been made by so many people and it has inspired so many people to bake halas on Friday that we thought we would take that basic halal recipe and update it for Rosh Hashanah. And I promise you this new version will shake up your Rosh Hashanah like nothing else. So let's start. We need flour in a big mixing bowl. And we're going to make a well in the flour. And by well, I mean we're going to make like an indentation. And I always use the water jug because that's about the size that I want. You know, it's like making sand castles at the beach. I've made an indentation in the flour, in the mixing bowl that I'm going to mix it in. I'm going to add in my yeast. And I'm using dried yeast and my sugar. And I'm using fine caster sugar, but if you've just got white sugar, that's also fine. So I'm putting my yeast, I'm going to put about half my sugar in. I'm going to get a wooden spoon and I'm going to add my water to the well. So in the well I have got my, all my yeast, about half of my sugar, and I'm adding the water. And I just want to mix it, keeping the mixture in the well. Um, you know, if a bit comes out, it's not the end of the world, but just try to keep it in the well, which is why I've made a really nice big indentation with the bottom of that jug. Okay, so stir that through. Okay, and if you can fit in all the water now, fit it in. If you can't, we'll add it in a minute. And now we just need to wait a minute because what I want is for my yeast to bubble and to froth. So if you get to this stage and you go away and you come back and you don't have a single bubble there, perhaps your yeast is old, perhaps it's past its use by date and you need to start again. Um, so there's an argument actually for doing this yeast part in a separate bowl so we don't waste all this flour. But I know my yeast is good, so I'm just going to go ahead. It's actually already starting to bubble. My water is warm, and remember, when you work with yeast, the water should be, I'm going to say blood temperature, which is a bit icky when we're talking about cooking, but that's the temperature we want. So just your body temperature, the temperature of a milk, a bottle, for a baby, that sort of thing, okay? So it's sort of lukewarm. It's not too hot, that'll kill you, the yeast. It's not too cold, that'll take too long to activate. So once it has frothed in the well, and let's assume that mine has, we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients. So I have here, I have salt, I've got my remaining sugar, and in here I've got my honey, oil, and eggs mixed together. And I'm just going to, break the yolks up and mix that so I don't have to chase the yolks around in that well, okay? So give that a good mix. My yolks are being very stubborn because of course this is a better job with a fork. You know that, don't you? And we're going to add this along with the salt and the sugar to the well. And just give it a stir. Okay, so give everything in the well a good mix, including those egg yolks that may not be fully mixed in with your wooden spoon. I'm going to add the salt. I'm going to add the rest of the sugar. Okay, so I have all my ingredients pretty much in the well and with my wooden spoon, I'm just going to go around and I'm gonna gather in the flour slowly. I mean, not too slowly, not spoon by spoon, but just circle by circle, it just makes it easier to mix the whole thing. So mix it around, make sure everything is well combined as you go. And we're just looking for a very sticky dough, which is what we're gonna have. Now, it's up to you, you could mix this by hand, knead it by hand, but I find with the honey, it's very, very sticky and you're gonna to have to add quite a lot of flour to be able to manage it with your hand. So I would prefer actually doing it in the machine if you can. If you don't have a machine, then do it by hand. Okay, so we're just now mixing, and you can see it's coming together really nicely, and it's a sticky 
mixture. It's quite hard to mix. It's using all my arm muscles here to mix this, but it will come together beautifully. That's great. Okay, so you can see once it's just about combined, the liquid's gone, I have a very shaggy dough. I am ready to put it in the stand mixer. Okay, I'm just going to get my pastry scraper. It's just a really good thing to get all this dough off the spoon. Okay, and now I'm going to put that into my stand mixer, and I'm using what is known as the dough hook, which is this funny looking hook thing. Okay, so I'm going to put that in. Click the bowl in and turn it on. And I'm going to do it on start low, of course, because I don't want all the flour that's not quite mixed in to end up all over me. And I'm just going to slowly do it till it comes together. Once I see it's sort of a mass, I can start turning the speed up just a little bit. Okay, that is now coming together nicely. It's going to take, ah, oh, I just realised I've left out a little bit of water. I'm just going to put it in now in the bottom. Okay, I'm going to turn it down and that's all just going to come together. There's always a mistake along the way. Okay. So that's going to come together and form a very sticky dough, as I said. And I'm going to give it about seven minutes in the mixer. No, you don't have to stay with me for seven minutes. Okay, so as soon as that stops sopping around, I'm ready to turn it up. And I'm going to leave it like that. And I'll see you in about seven minutes and I'll show you what it looks like then. Okay, so that's been about seven minutes and I want to show you what it looks like now. It's a very sticky dough and sometimes it does creep up on the dough hook, but don't worry about it. I found my better pastry scraper and I've got a bowl of extra flour because I'm just going to need this. I want to get it off the beater and down the off the sides of the bowl as well. So I'm just going to use my fingers and the pastry scraper to get it off. Okay, and it will come off. You can see how sticky it is, but that's good. I want it to be this sticky before it rises because it will change as it rises. Okay, so getting all that off, that's great. That came off quite easily. I'll get this out of the way. So with my pastry scraper, I'm just going to flour it a little bit. I'm going to just scrape down because some of the dough is on the edges of the bowl and I want it to be one mess as it rises. So I'm just scraping it down again with a bit of flour. I like to make like a, um, a lovely mound of dough in the bowl. Okay. I don't oil my bowl. I don't think there's actually a need to. And it's a lovely mound just like that. The edges are all scraped in and now we need to rise it probably for two hours but it depends on the temperature of your kitchen it's going to come up probably to at least the top of this bowl maybe higher depending on the day i generally cover it with plastic wrap i just feel that it helps seal in the moisture and the humidity which is what we want and then cover it with a tea towel or kitchen cloth and put it in a nice warm place and I'll see you in a couple of hours. Well, that went quickly, didn't it? It actually wasn't quite two hours. It's been about an hour and a half and you can see that my dough, and there's no trick photography here, has risen beautifully and is ready for the next stage. So before I open it, I'm going to make the apple filling or stuffing. And I need three Granny Smith apples, which I've peeled, and I'm going to chop into a small dice. And I'll just show you how I do one of them. And these are the, um, I don't know if you have the same apples, they're like a tart green apple. Um, and it's often used for um, cakes because it's not as sweet as red apples. I love them. Okay. And then I want to just cut that in half. So it's not too thick and then I'm going to make cuts along the apple like that and then I'm just going to turn it around and cut it the other way okay so that I get a nice dice and I was thinking about this this morning you could also grate the apple that might be quite nice as well all right 
So I'm going to chop that and these little side bits as well. Okay. Put it all into the bowl. I can get rid of my chopping board. And I'm going to add, um, I forgot to mention earlier, some sultanas. My sultanas were a bit dry. They'd been in the pantry for a while, so I just poured some boiling water over them and let them sit and sort of get plump again. And now I've just um, drained them and squeezed out the juice, and they're just lovely and soft now. So sultanas, nothing worse than dry sultanas, to be honest. Sugar and cinnamon. Beautiful, beautiful flavours. And just give that a mix together. I'm just making sure that all the cinnamon and the sugar is well dispersed through the apple. Okay, yum. Smells delicious. Absolutely delicious. I'd also like this cooked into a butter cake. It would be just divine. All right, so I think that's good. I'm happy with that. Okay, let's set that aside for the moment. I've got my beautiful risen dough. I've got my bowl of flour from earlier and my scraper, which I'm going to need because what's going to happen is because it's risen so high, this is going to stick a bit to the plastic, but that's all right. This scraper just gets everything off. Yum. Absolutely beautifully risen. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of that. Now, I'm going to need a little bit of flour on the bench, so I'm just going to lightly flour the bench. And you can divide your challah into two or into three. And because I'm going to make it for Rosh Hashanah, and I'm going to divide it up, I'm going to have one for us, one for my son who lives somewhere else, and one for my daughter who lives somewhere else, I need three challahs. So I'm actually going to divide this mixture into three. The original recipe does divide it into two. So whatever you like, it makes no difference to anything except how you divide the apples. I'm going to use my floured dough scraper to get the dough out. Okay, oh, this dough feels so beautiful and warm and lovely. And it's still a little bit sticky, but not like it was before. That's what rising does. Right, let's get every last bit of dough out of here. Perfect, and I can set that aside. Okay. So now I've got this beautiful big piece of dough, which you can see is very manageable now, and it wasn't really manageable earlier, so that's great. And I'm going to cut it into three. Now you could weigh it, it makes sense to actually weigh it, but I'm just gonna do it for the purposes of today. I'm gonna to use flour again. Okay, that's one. So I'm going to make three colours from this dough. I'm just going to set this aside on a floured bench while I deal with one. So unlike a normal colour, we're not going to plait it. We're actually going to make a um, like a snail or a coil, which is just something different, okay? This dough is so warm and lovely. Okay, so just gently. And once the dough has risen and gone onto the bench, we don't want to overwork it, okay? Because that's going to make a tough colour. So I'm just going to press it out gently to about that thickness. It's about probably one centimetre thickness. Oh, it's got so much warmth in it. It's beautiful. Okay, make sure it can lift up. And I'm going to put a third of the apple. Remember, I'm using a third of the dough, so I need a third of the apple. Again, you could weigh it, but there's um, there's no need for me to do that. I don't mind if mine aren't exactly the same. Okay, so I'm just going to spread the apple. Yep, that looks like about a third of it along that. And I'm just going to press it in a bit into the dough. I'm just going to wipe my hands. They're a bit wet now. And with a little bit of flour, I'm just going to roll this into a sausage or a snake or a log, whatever you want to call it. Pushing it as I go to just to try to keep the apple mixture in it, okay? So that's it. 
It's a beautiful log and I'm really trying not to overwork it. Let me move this out of the way. And now I'm going to coil it. I'm going to start at one end and just not too tightly because it's going to have another rise. So we want to leave some room for it to, to spread a little bit more. And just going to coil it up like that. And I'm going to tuck the end underneath. And that is number one of three. Okay, it's really simple to do. Take. And you may think that that um, we're a long way from Rosh Hashanah. Well, you know, it's now two weeks away. But I'm actually going to put these in the freezer and wrap them really well when they're cold, when they're room temperature, plastic wrap, silver foil, put them in the freezer and take them out for Rosh Hashanah. So my Rosh Hashanah colours are now done, thanks to you. So they're a good thing to freeze as well. It's good to know that. All right, again. So I may have put a little bit too much filling in the first one. But it doesn't matter. Again, press down the apple. Dry your hands. A little bit of flour. And I'll do it that way so you can see. And I'm just doing it so that the apple stays in, okay? I'm pulling it and rolling it and pulling it and rolling it. it already feels and, and smells delicious and imagine when it's baked and golden how good it's going to be okay. so again we've made a lovely log I've got the seam down on the bench I'm going to make sure it's a nice uniform ish size and turn this and make a lovely coil okay it's really simple and rustic which is just what I love so there are my three won't my kids be so happy so that's my three colours ready to go. I just need to cover it lightly and I'm going to use the tea towel that I used before. And I'm just going to cover it and let it sit at room temperature for about um, half an hour to 45 minutes. And then we'll do the final step before we bake it. Okay, I'm back again. It's been about half an hour and the colours have plumped up beautifully. And it's exactly what I was looking for. So now we need to do a quick egg wash and we're going to sprinkle it with some sugar. I've got some Demerara sugar, which is a very coarse grained brown sugar. If you don't have that, you can just use brown sugar or white sugar um, or just egg wash on its own. So I'm going to beat the egg, got my fork this time, and I just want it to have no stringy bits in it. Okay, so I want to be beat it quite well. Sometimes I have egg yolks left over from cooking with egg whites and I just use an egg yolk and water which is also fine for glazing colour. Okay, so I've just egg washed all the colours, painting them on the top, the sides and in the crevices where I can. And the final touch is sprinkling it with this beautiful coarse grained sugar. And that is ready to bake. See you in about 40 minutes. So I've pulled these out of the oven. They've been out for about 10 minutes. I can now touch them. They are golden and well risen and they look absolutely beautiful. So that is our apple, cinnamon and honey colour for Rosh Hashanah. Remember it comes from our latest book, Now for Something Sweet, which you can get of course on Amazon across the world, but also in exclusive books in South Africa. Um, if you do post your pics on social media, please don't forget to tag us. We are Monday Morning CC on Instagram and Monday Morning Cooking Club on Facebook. And we have a YouTube channel with lots and lots of cooking videos. Just search Monday Morning Cooking Club. So that's it from me. Shana Tava to all of you. Sending wishes for good health and everything else you want for the new year. Specifically good health, I think. Stay safe, everyone. Bye for now.